what are some of the personal things that are happening to me right now? Well, a lot of them are different. A lot of things have changed. Uh, first off, I'm undergoing electrolysis for my beard. I started this in April and it's still ongoing. Um, I know people a lot of times will go, when's it going to be over? And it's a little bit like Rambo. It'll be over when it's over, you know, that's, uh, that's the problem. So far what they've taken away, what the woman who I go and see has taken away has been pretty much this part of my face is all cleared out and a little of my upper lip and a little of the lower area here. What remains is along the jawline, here in the chin, a little bit up in here and just under the jawline. Which sounds like a lot, but she's thinned out um, this area considerably. Um, now when I go in, I'll usually spend, you know, three days growing out my beard so that she can get at it better and get the hairs out. I can't actually do laser that much anymore. I've had a couple of laser treatments, but you need a darker beard to be able to do that. My beard, unfortunately, is not dark. It's kind of gray. So that necessitates going in and removing each one individually. At first, for about, two, for the, about the first two months, I was doing it every week. Um, once a week, usually with about a nine day rest period for two hours a session. Ouch. Um, electrolysis is not fun. It's painful. It hurts. It really does. Um, unlike laser, and laser's no treat either. It, it stings as well. Uh, but la uh, electrolysis. They stick an electric needle in your face and wiggle it around and shoot current in there to kill off the dead, the dead hairs and then they go in and they pluck the individual whiskers out with a tweezer. I've actually watched the woman who does my electrolysis doing this uh, with a hand mirror. Yeah, I'll just sit back and watch it and it's really kind of fascinating. But it is painful. Uh, I've had a couple of crying sessions where about an hour and a half in I just completely lost it because of it was hurting so much and um, I had one session where I got 10 minutes into it and I just said I can't do it that's this is it I just I just can't do it anymore it, this is killing me so right now I do it about once every two and a half weeks and one of the things I try to time is to get it in a period where it's before my next hormone shot. We sort of discovered <laughs> by accident that my skin gets really sensitive uh, within a few days after my shot. So if I go in for electrolysis, it, it didn't matter what I was doing to my face, it hurt. And I do use the anesthesia, uh, the anesthesia, <laughs> the numbing <laughs> topical. I'm not even going to try that word. Uh, the topical is supposed to numb. I've tried everything, you know, putting it on, and I've had the plastic around my face to get it into the pores and everything else. Electrolysis still hurts, and it's um, it's not fun. No, really. I go back in on the 19th in the morning to have my face zapped again and then I won't go back for about a month. It's coming out, it's slow. Uh, fortunately, my, uh, the woman who does it, she does a lot of things to get my mind off of uh, the, the torture I'm going through. So she's, a, she's good, she's a real trooper. But it's messed up my face really bad. Um, you know, there is some, Areas here, discoloration that um, are kind of going away. It's the face is still healing up. Uh, it it does do a number on your face. Uh, there was one time when I had the lip here and the sides of the mouth done, and it just puffed up so bad. 
that I looked like a bulldog. Right? You know, the upper lip was just hanging over, literally, and it was difficult to smile. I mean, I couldn't smile. I was trying to like smile on a camera like that, and it was hard to even drink coffee because I just couldn't get my mouth open properly. It hurt, but it goes away after a few days. You get used to it. Now, you're probably wondering, hey, how are you covering that up at work? Because when I did these videos last year, nobody at work knew I was transgender. Well, guess what? I have been out at work uh, since beginning of February, and I am what you now call 24-7. You know, this is my real life experience. And it really all started coming about last Thanksgiving. I went back to Indiana for a week. And I decided when I went back, I was like, the minute I leave Harrisburg, I'm going as Cassie. No more of this, I'm going to pretend I'm a guy. So I left as Cassie, I came back as Cassie, and I stayed Cassie the entire time I was in Indiana, okay? When I got back here, I went back to work, I ran into a situation that my therapist had warned me about. She said, you can only do this part-time stuff for so long. And then she said, you're going to come to hate Sundays because you're gonna go into female mode Friday evening after you get home from work and you're gonna stay in it all weekend until Sunday night. And then the realization is going to hit you that <sighs> I gotta go back into work and pretend I'm a guy. So the month of December, I fought with the entire notion of, well, when do I do this? I should do this either right around the holidays, which I began to realize was a bad time. And then it was like, right after the holidays are over, do this. And that was what I did. But I actually did a few things that kind of forced my hand um, to actually say, now you have to do it because um, one of the things I did was, well, I didn't get black fingernail polish, but I actually had like a, a dark red uh, nail polish put on, which up to that point, I've been getting manicures. But when I put polish on, it was usually something that would just kind of blend in and I thought would be unnoticeable. I found out later <laughs> from people that, no, we noticed you were wearing nail polish. Uh, so we just, we didn't say anything, but we noticed you were wearing nail polish. And the other thing I did was I got a second set of piercings right there. Uh, I've had these, my bottom lobes, pierced for quite some time, 2012. So one day I was bored. <laughs> which is really a good thing. And I said, I'm gonna get a second piercing in my ear. And I went and got it, and of course, they put earrings in, and they say, you gotta leave these in for six weeks. So I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna go into work, and if anyone says anything, you know, I'll tell them I had earrings put in. No one said anything to me. No one. <laughs> no one wanted to say anything. It was real strange. So, um, January 10th, I believe, I went into my boss's office and I said I need to talk and I said this is, this is how it is. I'm transgender. I, um, I think of myself as female. I identify as female. I present myself as female when I'm not at work. People look at me as a woman and um, so end of January I'm going to stop coming in as a guy because I'm not one and I'm going to start coming in as a woman in February. The other thing that was driving that as well was HRT. Um, my breasts were coming in. I wasn't wearing a bra and it was really becoming noticeable <laughs> that I had a uh, breast uh, underneath my women's polo shirts. And I said, this was the other thing. I said, I have physical changes that are occurring to me and it's becoming kind of um, embarrassing to come into work knowing you know, these are visible. So 
that was one of the, that was the things that really drove it. And the word went around the office that I was uh, going to transition. The biggest question anybody had, of course, was which bathroom am I going to use? Uh, fortunately, they had an all-gender uh, handicapped bathroom that I'd been using for years, ever since I got there. But I have used a women's restroom. And transition at work has went well. Uh, I've only had one person who had anything even kind of negative to say to me about it. And nearly everyone is uh, pretty accepting. You know, the people who don't talk to me were generally the people who never talked to me anyway. But everyone kind of accepts me as, you know, Cassidy, the, the <laughs> that person who, <laughs> you know, for the longest time she used to look like a guy, but no, she isn't. Uh, and that's one of the things I explained to him. I said, you know, I was always a woman. When I walked in this place, I was already in therapy. I was already beginning to can transition, you know. So I've always been a woman. Uh, the interesting thing is also that I'm probably the only one in state government, since I do work for the state out here in Pennsylvania, who's actually a, a transitioning, uh, trans, uh, I almost said transsexual, Jesus, uh, transgender woman. Um, and that's kind of unusual. Uh, there is one other person I was told by my boss who works in the division just kind of a contracted division uh, that takes care of uh, all the IT infrastructure. And I was told that she uh, transitioned on the job and has had, quote, the operation, yes, unquote. <laughs> That's exactly how it was put to me. She's had the operation. Okay, well, that operation, we all know about that. Um, Fortunately, there are a lot of LGBT protections in place for state employees here in Pennsylvania, even though before the marriage equality ruling, uh, Pennsylvania was the only state in the country where you could marry your same-sex partner on Saturday, and on Monday you could be fired for being gay. <laughs> so, yeah, a uh, little bit of a conundrum there, but uh, not only am I out as a transgender woman, but everybody, just about everybody in the office is completely aware of the fact that I'm also a lesbian, so, yes. <laughs> I, I has the protections, I don't know, um, but yes, I, uh, I'm out, I mean completely out, and as far as I know, other, I'm the only one transitioning at the state, in state government. Uh, there is another, that I mean, I know of the one transgender woman and also here in the state of Pennsylvania, our physician general is transgender. Uh, she practiced out in Hershey, Pennsylvania. So, you know, three of us, yay girls. There you go. And lastly, something else that I've been dealing with being in state government is in now less than a month, on November 9, I go back to Indiana and I go before a judge and I get my name changed, or at least I have the petition put in place to change my name. I have all the paperwork, I got everything done, I will change my name, That's, I'm hoping, I don't see any reason why I wouldn't. I will get a new driver's license, I have the necessary paperwork also for the state of Indiana and the Department of Motor Vehicles to change my gender marker. So when I come back here to Harrisburg and start work after that short trip to Indiana, I will be completely legit. I will, you know, I will be a whole new girl. So there you go. And that's one of the things I'm having to deal with is like I need a new identity badge and the woman in our office who normally handles this even said we've they you know they've never really had to deal with this before uh, we've never really had anyone in the office who 
you know, has transitioned. This, the state of Pennsylvania really has never had to deal with this before. So there, I'm, I'm the test case. So there you go. Um, lots happened in a year. And I think it's time I'll do one last video and give you my final thoughts and show you how things have been going with me.